you would get your Bibles out, open them up to 1 Peter chapter 4. We are going to be looking at verses 12 through 19. Verses 12 through 19. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you again for coming out this evening. I know it's Labor Day and there's a lot of people who are out doing Labor Day things. Um, and some people are out at that concert, but I appreciate you all coming out here this evening. And uh, since we finished up Titus last week, I uh, decided to do something different and we're going to be looking at this passage. And uh, it's an interesting passage. Uh, I think that one of the things that we as Christians need to work on, and especially Christians who live in a Western, free Christian culture like America, where we're, we are free to worship, and we have been free to worship for hundreds of years, uh, that sometimes the idea of suffering that that Paul would talk about, that Peter would talk about, that was always hanging over the heads of the first century church is not something that we think about. It's not something that, uh, that we go through lives thinking about, hmm, well, I can identify with the suffering of the early church. In fact, it seems like often in our culture we have a completely non-biblical view of suffering. And so, we're going to work through this passage tonight, and we're going to see what Peter had to say about suffering, and hopefully see how we can begin to develop a proper biblical theology of suffering. I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole, uh, the whole passage to us tonight. It's not very long. Uh, that way we can kind of see the whole thing at once before we start digging into it verse by verse. And I will be reading from the uh, English Standard Version. It says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful Creator while doing good. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank You for the opportunity to come here tonight, uh, hopefully at the end of a, a relaxing weekend, and, and spend some time studying Your Word, uh, learning more about what You have to say to us. Father, I pray that You bless this time and, and bless the preaching of Your Word today. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, starting in verse 12, Peter says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Notice what Peter says here. Do not be surprised. He says to the Christians here, trials will come. Don't be surprised when they come. It's just a matter of when. Sometimes I think that we today, we have this idea that periods of trial and periods of suffering are, they, they, they surprise us, like they're not the norm, like they're something that's, that's abnormal. And why in the world, God, would you let me go through this? And uh, Peter says to these churches, don't be surprised when they come. He says the fiery trial. What does he mean when he says the fiery trial? There are some commentators who suggest that what Peter's talking about here is, uh, if you know a little bit of history, you know that uh, in the middle of the first century, Rome burned. And Nero tried to pin the burning of Rome on Christians. They were an easy scapegoat. 
They were not a protective religion in the Roman Empire, and uh, they were already viewed as kind of, the Christians were already viewed as outcasts and kind of hokey. And so he said, they did it. And then he proceeded to launch into this vicious and violent persecution against the Christians. And some uh, commentators have suggested that that's what Peter is referring to there. But I think what he's actually referring to is a refining process. And I think you'll see this come into light more as we work through this. Um, elsewhere in Scripture, you've seen the, the idea that fire is a refinement, that trial is a refining process, and that we go through these things, and it might be painful, and it might be a struggle, but God uses them to melt the impurities out of us. And I think what Peter has in mind here is this idea of refining a metal, like gold going through a fire and being refined and all the impurities being melted out and worked out of, the, out of the gold so that it becomes more valuable. And so, right from the beginning of this passage, Peter's already starting to lay out what his idea of suffering is going to be throughout the rest of it. He's saying that it's a refining process. And then again, at the end of the passage, he said, as though something strange were happening to you, as Christians, when the hard times come, when, the, when struggles come, when we're going through the, the fire, as it were, Peter says, this isn't a strange thing. This should, this should not be a surprise to us when it happens. Going on into verse 13, it says, But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. Notice Peter's attitude about suffering. And the church that he's writing to here was undergo periodic persecutions. In the Roman Empire, the, the church wasn't under a constant state of persecution, but at different times, like after the fire in Rome, there would be these incredibly heavy periods of persecution where Christians would be actively hunted down and, and killed. And, but there, it was not a constant thing. And, uh, and so... Peter is probably writing to a church here that is in a lull. And so he says, don't be surprised when they come, but when they do come, rejoice. Rejoice. Because you share in Christ's suffering. When we suffer in the present, in our lives now, for following Christ, it's not something that we should be beaten down about. That we should shake our fist at God and say, God, why in the world are you letting this happen to me? This is not right. I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be happy all the time. Right? Because that's what the Bible says. If you're a Christian, you're supposed to be happy all the time. No, that's not, that's not what it says. Uh, but, but Peter says, when we do encounter this suffering, when we do encounter the hard times, we should rejoice that we have been counted worthy to suffer like our Savior suffered. He says, we find joy because we know the end of the story. At the end of verse 13, it says that you may also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. Notice that Peter talks about at the beginning about Christ's suffering, how He died, how He went through this anguish. But that was not the end of the story. He points the Christians here after telling them to expect suffering to when you are going through suffering, know that it's temporary. Because we know the end of the story. We know that Jesus wins. And so he says that we, in our suffering, even when we're going through hard times, even when we're experiencing pain, that we can look beyond that, that we can see Jesus, who's there waiting for us, who's calling us home, and rejoice. Because Jesus wins. Verse 14. If you are insulted for the name of Christ... You are blessed because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. This is incredible what he's saying right here. And it's easy to miss. But what Peter is saying is that when you're going through these sufferings, when you're going through these hard times, who's there with you? God, the Holy Spirit, is there with you when you're suffering, when you're facing trials, when you're facing hardship. 
You're not going at it alone. It's not just you. And imagine the encouragement to this early church community as they're always looking over their shoulders, wondering if somebody's following them, wondering if somebody is, is going to come and take their families. And Peter says, it's okay. God is right there with you through it all. And He'll be with you in the good times, and He'll be with you in the bad times. Just because things are hard, just because things are rough, does not mean that God has abandoned you. Does not mean that you've somehow done wrong. God's still with you, right there.